love is blind or love is wine. For this review, love has to be wine because that is the only way that I'm able to make it through the Love is Blind season six reunion. When I tell you this reunion was so messy, this entire season was full of drama. So that's what reunions are about. We're supposed to address the mess, settle scores. I thought Netflix was gonna give it to us. I really did. They started explosive and it ended with a buzz. But I guess it's buzzworthy. It's worth talking about. As usual, Nick and Vanessa, they dropped the ball. But I'm here to pick it up and keep rolling because y'all already know I've watched the interviews. I've seen the social media. So the stuff they didn't say on the reunion, I have the tea. Let's jump right in. Nick and Vanessa Lachey, they did a really cute little intro where they were pretending like they were on a blind date in the pods. So eventually they make their way to the stage. We see a live audience. This live audience not only consists of fans of the show, but it also consists of couples and castmates from previous seasons of Love is Blind. So this is very different. But as you know, we're not here for the audience. We're ready to see the cast. Okay, so boom. The season six cast come out to take their places on stage. We have Jeremy and Jessica, Clay and AD, Johnny and Amy, Chelsea and Jimmy, and Kenneth and Brittany. Now, before we jump into the craziness, the hosts decide to shine a spotlight on Johnny and Amy. So we get a quick check in with them where they talk about this first year of marriage and how it's been so great. Their families travel with each other. They take these weird Christmas pictures. They thought it was funny and I thought it was just weird, but whatever. They're still lovebirds. They're happy. Amy is not pregnant, so everything is all good in the hood. After checking in, Nick and Vanessa Lachey decide to show us a quick video montage of all of the different couples of Love is Blind throughout all of the seasons. Something that stood out to me is that they mentioned that nine out of the 11 couples that got married on the show are still married together, happy. And I was like, oh, well, who got divorced? Then I had to think about it. I think that was season two. It was this like weird couple. They're actually suing the show right now. Then we have Ayana and Jared. I was shocked they got married. So it was not shocking when they got a divorce a year later. But to have nine out of 11, that's a pretty good track record. So I'd say Love is Blind, the experiment is working. Now, why did they show us a montage video of all of the couples that have gotten engaged and married on the show? Obviously, that was their way of introducing us to all of the couples that are in the audience from previous seasons. Now, if I didn't have these braces on, I would gladly go through all of the names for you. But the way I get tongue tied, I'm just not even about to do that to myself. But the main purpose of this was for them to eventually get to Gigi with her boyfriend. And he is not from Love is Blind. Sources say that he's from The Bachelorette. He was a contestant, I suppose. First comes love, then comes going out, and now comes a baby in the baby carriage because Gigi is pregnant. She's having a boy. I don't know why they spend so much time on her, but she wanted to let us know that she can't decide on a boy name right now. So the best transition of the night has to go to Nick Lachey because he used Gigi's moment to transition and say, Moving on to someone who had a little trouble deciding on their person as well, we have Jeremy. It's been a year since you and Laura broke off you guys' engagement. Are you dating someone right now? So Jeremy responds, yes, I am. But he has a nervous laughter. Then he says, it's going good. And just right there, that let me know this dude is lying. But... Just when we thought we were watching Love is Blind, Love is Blind turned into Jerry Springer because the host of the show said, oh, we think we have that special someone that you're dating here with us today. Let's bring her on out. The doors open up and it is Sarah Ann. And Sarah Ann walks out like she was the cutest thing since prom in 2008. I mean, she was excited. Her body was all glittered up. She was so happy. And everybody in the audience and on stage was looking at her like, okay, I don't know why you smiling and happy. Ain't nobody a fan of you. She had the nerve to sit by her boo and hold his hand. Now I say had the nerve because she forgets he didn't pick her. He stayed out with her till five o'clock in the morning. But 
she thinks the coast is clear because Laura is not on stage. Oh, but another Jerry Springer moment happens and the hosts let us know that we have a lot to catch up on with you guys. But first, Laura has shared her location with us. Now, at this point, we see Laura pop up on a video call because apparently she's in Barcelona for work. So now I'm going to fast forward through their segment because Netflix took such a long time on this. But long story short, they start questioning Jeremy about him lying to Laura about where his location was because he didn't think that she was up checking it. He tried to lie again. They re-asked him the question again. And then ultimately he said, I didn't intentionally lie about it. I just didn't have anything to hide. Jeremy just be saying stuff so it can look like he has an answer, but you still haven't even answered the question. Whatever. So then Laura is mad because she feels like he's never really taken accountability. He's never apologized. She thinks that he's a clown. Sarah Ann jumps in and says, clown, you're the one to be calling somebody a clown. You're a clown. And I heard that you were calling me a pick me girl. I'm not the pick me girl. You're the pick me girl. And I'm like, girl, didn't you send him a DM? saying, if things aren't going well with you, hey, I'm still around, pick me. Are you not the definition of a pick me girl? But whatever the case, there was a lot of rah, rah, rah on stage. Like none of the girls were here for Sarah Ann. And what I peeped is that Sarah Ann was like a wild chihuahua, just like trying to jump in and trying to fight, trying to fight. But chihuahuas are also like very annoying. Like you just want to kick them. I mean, I ain't gonna kick nobody's dog, but a wild chihuahua that you can't get a hold of, that was Sarah Ann. And Jeremy was just sitting there and he wasn't sticking up for his boo. At some point, they decided that it was better for them to humble themselves because this was a, a losing battle for them. What I did not like is that Netflix decided to show us footage of Sarah Ann and Laura, and apparently they had a chat at the lake house. And I'm thinking, Netflix, why didn't you show this during the season? We see in the footage that Laura was like, yes, I do think that it's really disrespectful woman to woman, but ultimately I blame Jeremy because he's the one that proposed to me and he should have protected me. Jeremy is more so concerned about his image than anything. He said word for word, as long as I don't look as bad as Jimmy looks on camera. Jimmy is watching this footage and Jimmy is turning redder than red. Jeremy was like, I don't remember saying that. If I said that, I apologize. Yeah, because at this point, nobody was here for them. Nobody was checking for them. Chelsea also chimed in and said, I've seen Jeremy since this whole experiment has been over. And every time I see him, he tells me that they're broken up. Sarah Ann looks stumped. She looks shocked, like broken up. We ain't never broke up. We together. So Jeremy says, let me explain me and Sarah Ann, we've had our ups and downs. So there were times where we may not have been doing so well, but we got back together. And after our last split, we ended up moving in with each other. And I share my location with her as well. Also, side note, on social media, his ex-fiance said one of the reasons why they broke up is because she caught him cheating via his location sharing. Jeremy. Why do you share your location with them? Like, you want them to pop up on you. I don't think that's a good idea, but do you, boo? I also forgot to tell y'all, before they got Laura off the screen, Laura said, oh, before I leave, I want to address that bean dip comment. I want to apologize. I've apologized off camera as well as on camera. However, when Laura even made mention of bean dip, AD was like, oh my gosh, we really don't have to talk about this. We're still on this. And so I honestly think that's why the host of Love is Blind didn't bring it up. That's just my opinion. Moving right along. Trevor comes out on stage, sits by Jeremy, perfect location because Trevor is also public enemy number one. Before he could say anything, they said, Trevor, now social media has been doing an investigation and we see that you apparently had a girlfriend before you came on this show. So then they pull up a text conversation that the girlfriend put on social media and they are reading line by line. He basically told her, look, I'm going into this experiment and I love you. I can't wait to get back to you. He comes out of the experiment and says, I love you more than anything. I'm coming back to marry you. So now they say, Trevor, what do you have to say about that? 
and Trevor is stuck. It is silent. You can hear crickets. And he's like, well, I had this whole speech plan to say, but I don't know. Let me start by saying she wasn't my girlfriend. Like we weren't dating, dating. And the hosts were like, you told her you loved her. So how can you say that you're not dating? He was like, look, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm a toxic person. I need to go to therapy too. I had good intentions coming into this. I told her she knew I was coming on the show. And I told her if I find somebody on this show, I'm rocking with them because I wanted to give the experiment a try. They said, did you want to give the experiment a try or did you want to be on TV? And they are hounding him about this. I didn't really think this was fair. Because truthfully, all of them that are on stage, a part of them wanted to be on TV because this is televised by Netflix. This is not a private experiment that they just did in their hometown. So for them to hound him the way they did, they should have been talking to multiple people on this stage. Now, Sarah Ann also made a whole TikTok that said, this is all for entertainment. We're entertaining you guys. So they got on her case about that too. But basically, the hosts were trying to get the point out there that Netflix, Love is Blind, is not a joke and that you should not waste people's time coming on this experiment when you really don't have intentions to find love and move forward with them. Chelsea then chimes in to say she knew that there was a reason why she just couldn't put her finger on it, why she couldn't pick him, but something was bothering her and obviously that was it. And I'm thinking, Chelsea... Shut up, because we have not even gotten to you. You want to make yourself look so good, and girl, you looked horrible the whole season. So we're going to put you on ice. Let's get back to Trevor. Trevor, at some point, gets so overwhelmed. He's like, can I just leave? And they ignored him. Then they decided to let everyone know that this is not a joke, and this is unfair, and this type of behavior will not be tolerated. Trevor, you asked to leave, you can now leave. And I was like, dang, why did he show up just to be humiliated? A part of me thinks that he was forced to show up to this reunion because they dragged him. I think that because he came into the experiment already having a girlfriend, that makes it look like the show is fake. From the producer's point of view, he had to have violated his contract in some type of way by that information getting out. So either you pay a fine or you show up to this reunion and you get what you get and you don't throw a fit. And I think that's what happened. Bye bye, Trevor. Moving right along. Then we get to the couple that we all been waiting for, Clay and AD. Now, when I tell you AD, her dress was everything it was fitted it was brown and i love brown on brown skin it just looks amazing it's just melanin magic and she wore it for clay that was obvious all day long what i noticed about them is that they were sitting on the same couch with each other but they had a noticeable distance between the two of them their bodies were turned away from each other so that makes you think okay, they don't want to have any type of closeness or they don't want to display that to make it seem as if they're together. Let me explain why. So apparently we hear that they didn't talk for weeks after the wedding. He also tried to reach out to her several times. Some of his messages went unanswered and eventually she did answer him. He apologized to her. He's so sorry he, he humiliated her. He said, I apologized to her mom, her cousins, her sisters, probably her aunties. Then he looks at her and says, you are the love of my life. And it was a mistake that I made at the altar. And AD was sitting up there trying to look tough and trying to look like, mm, you don't have nothing to say to me. Like she wasn't trying to make eye contact with him at first, but the more he kept talking, she started breaking down a little bit and breaking down. Then she starts looking at him slowly, 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 her body turning inward towards him. His words and his tone of voice and the shakiness in his voice, that was actually doing something to her. And as a viewing audience, I was like, dang, he is nervous and he's not blinking like crazy like he normally does. So I think he's actually telling the truth. So then the host asked, AD, would you ever date Clay again? And she said, 
Hmm. Next question. So then they asked, Clay, would you ever date AD again? And he said, I 1000% would date AD again. I'm just trying to prove I'm a better man and I've been in therapy. So then they asked Clay, did you ever get that apology that your mom was saying that you need from your dad? And Clay says, me and my dad, we have a good relationship. We have playful banter and in his own way, he apologized and I accept that. And I said, oh, Clay, in his own way is not an apology. An apology is a direct apology. But maybe he knows that he will never actually get that out of his father, which is very unfortunate. But at the same time, you can't sit around waiting for an apology forever. Your healing is your responsibility. So maybe that was Clay's way of saying, that's the best I'm gonna get out of him and that's why I'm in therapy and I'm gonna just keep working on me. So I give that to Clay. Clay and his mama went on the Tamron Hall show talking about how this experience has really helped their family to heal and how Clay is still healing. I think that Clay has shown some growth on this reunion, but I think that Clay did not come on this show with intentions to actually go and marry somebody. Clay has a whole YouTube where the day before Love is Blind came out, he said, this is gonna be the best season yet. I don't think that he knew what his edit was gonna be and how he was gonna be perceived by the general public because most people are furious with Clay. And now AD has been on a press tour. She's gone to the Nick Vile podcast, talked about how she's so single. The freaking Jennifer Hudson show, talking about how single she was. Clay did not crack a smile this entire reunion. He was a nervous, emotional wreck. And AD was making sure that she took no accountability. That's what I didn't like. I think that the host should have asked AD, okay, we saw him say on camera several times that he was not ready to get married. Why did you not listen to him? Why were you shocked? She said, she is a captain fix a hoe. So do you think that's what Clay is? They also should have asked AD about her intentions when she spoke to Amber about Matt saying the same thing to the both of them. Was she trying to send Amber home? So was Clay your first choice or was he your default because Matt was no longer available? Did I mention they showed us footage of Matthew saying one thing to AD and then saying the same thing to Amber? Beyond that, they asked Clay, you said that you watched previous seasons of Love is Blind and you weren't ready to be married like some of those men. And what couple were you speaking of? So Clay says, I was actually referring to Brett from season four. So then they put the camera on Brett and Tiffany. Brett then has his moment where he starts to get emotional and he says, I appreciate that compliment. Thank you. I can say that I'm blessed to have the woman that I have by my side because I also have struggles from my childhood and seeing my parents' marriage. And I could have easily questioned whether I was gonna be a good husband or not, or if I was gonna be able to show up the way that she needed me to show up in her life. She created a safe space for me. And I also trusted that I could be the man that I knew I wanted to be for myself and for her. Then Tiffany decides to co-sign and say, yes, you have, you've been doing great. So I thought that was cute. Enough about them. They then quickly go over to Johnny and Amy. There was really nothing new to talk about. They just asked them if they figured out the birth control thing, which obviously they did. They still haven't had a fight. They have disagreements, but they just talk it out like regular everyday people. Apparently life has been going great for them. So although they were the successful couple, they probably got five minutes total of speaking time and camera time. So then we have a few questions that come from the audience from the former castmates. They asked Jimmy if his friend was mad about being exposed on camera when Chelsea exposed that they had hooked up in the past. Jimmy said, yes, she was upset. And truthfully, I probably should have ended the relationship then because that was a turning point for me. And Chelsea says, yes, and I feel so bad. And I've apologized to the friend over and over. Yes, those were my feelings, but I should not have brought it up on camera. 
Nick then asked the ladies on the cast, how did they feel watching Chelsea and Jimmy's relationship play out on camera behind closed doors? And AD said, actually, I was very shocked because Chelsea presents herself as a very confident woman. So seeing her with him and some of the insecurities, it just caught me off guard. I was shocked. And so Chelsea says, yes, I can admit I was very insecure. Obviously, I had a lot to work on. I've been in therapy. That is everybody's safety word for the night. That is everyone's excuse. Oh, I'm in therapy. So yeah, disregard everything I did the whole season because I'm in therapy. And I feel like that's exactly what Nick and Vanessa did. They did not ask Chelsea any of the hard questions. They should have addressed Chelsea for the relentless amount of emotional abuse that she forced on Jimmy the entire season. I don't care if she's in therapy. Why did you treat him like that? Do you not realize that was emotional abuse? Jimmy, were you okay with being treated like that? She beat Jimmy down this entire season and we had to sit there and watch it for four weeks. And the fact that they gave her this victim role during the reunion, I hated that. They bring up the Megan Fox comment and they asked her how that's affected her. Chelsea says she's been dragged by social media. That's her one regret from this season, but she's proud of herself because she's very strong and she's not letting it affect her. Once again, the hosts have dropped the ball. Why didn't you ask Chelsea, why did she say that in an experiment that is supposed to be blind? Now, Chelsea has done an interview on YouTube she was saying that she did not feel bad about the way that she treated him. She did not feel like she was insecure. She felt like he wasn't validating her feelings. Chelsea decided to name more celebrity lookalikes and she threw Katy Perry in there. And I'm like, girl, stop while you're ahead. You don't look like none of these people. She tried to say that Jimmy would lie and that's why they would get into arguments. But she would also insinuate and lie as well. If you're going to bring them on the reunion, address the drama. Don't walk on eggshells because you don't want their feelings to be hurt. That's stupid. So then they start talking to Jessica on the couch. Apparently, Jessica is like besties with Chelsea now. That's weird. Jessica... <sighs> Her 15 minutes of fame has extended to 45 minutes and it is just sickening. She proceeds to say that she thought that her and Jimmy were cool, but then he started being on interviews and talking bad about her, saying that she got a good edit and that she walked out of their date where they had that hard conversation that she walked out 10 minutes later. And Jimmy was like, first of all, I didn't bash you in interviews. And I can say, I watched that interview. He did not bash her. But Jessica wanted this to be her moment. And she said, it was not 10 minutes. I wish somebody would pull up the footage. Pull up the footage. So this is a post edit. They showed the entire time span. The entire conversation was almost two and a half hours long. And I thought, did y'all really make this a thing about timing? Like, this is not a big deal. There are so many other things that y'all could be addressing right now. Moving on. One of those audience members did ask Kenneth and Brittany, did y'all ever consider just jumping right in, test drive this car, and maybe feelings will occur? So Brittany jumps in and says, no, it was my decision for us to not be physically intimate because I don't feel like you have to test that out to know if you have a connection with someone. Kenneth and Brittany seemed very rehearsed this entire reunion. They came off as if they were best friends. Mind you, this entire season, we watched Kenneth look at his phone, ignore her, not touch her, not be intimate with her, her keep trying to bring it up and him not caring. They asked him about his phone and he said, well, you know, I am a principal. I'm very hands-on with my parents and my students. And I'm thinking, don't you have a vice principal? Don't you have a secretary and a staff? Don't you got teachers? Why would the principal step in so quickly? Kenneth, that is a whole lie and a half. Brittany claims that she has met everybody in Kenneth's life. She FaceTimes with Kenneth multiple times a day. They realize they're better off as friends. And when they both do decide to date someone, obviously they're going to have to respect their significant others because they have such a closeness that maybe a significant other wouldn't understand. Brittany, 
you are lying. You are lying. There has been a lot of rumors out there on social media about Kenneth. I felt like Britney was playing a role. I just don't believe this facade that y'all have decided to bring to the reunion stage. It pans to the audience and we have Alexa and Brennan. Alexa's pregnant. They were gonna go through IVF treatments and two months before she got pregnant. Speaking of IVF, the main couple that we all know from Love is Blind is Lauren and Cameron from season one. I watched a social media clip of Lauren when she was saying that her and Cameron were actually invited to the Love is Blind reunion to be out in the audience, but they declined to come because they already had a prior engagement. She also mentioned that she is looking into IVF treatments as well too. They showed Zach and Bliss on the screen. Bliss is having a girl. They're super excited. Kwame and Chelsea, they show them in the audience as well as Matt and Colleen. Matt and Colleen have finally moved in with each other. They announced that Chelsea and Kwame are traveling more because Chelsea has a new position with Love is Blind. She is now on the casting team. Also, we have Izzy and Micah in the audience. They are singles from previous seasons. Apparently, they are going to be on Perfect Match right along with Cheating Trevor and Jessica. Y'all, before I get out of here, love is wine. Go check out your local liquor stores. Personally, I got this from hy V down the street. It was only $10.99, Chardonnay. And I ain't gonna lie, I put my stamp of approval on it. It's not bad. And it's a cute little bottle. Next season, I will be back with love is wine and a gold cup. But until then, thank you so much for your support. Follow me on Instagram at sheistwinkle1. Like, 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 like this video. Subscribe to the channel. I will be coming out with more reviews. So stay tuned. Love you all. Bye-bye.